Governor Green had five priorities for his first 100 days in office. He had planned to make big strides in housing and homelessness, as well as other issues. So has he been able to work on everything he wanted to, everything he promised? He joins us now with more and a look back and a look forward. Governor, thanks for joining us again. Thank you. Hard to believe 100 days are ready that will be reached next week. Before we talk about that, let's talk about this past weekend. And you were on Kauai. Yes, I try to go to the neighbor islands uh, with great frequency because that's where a lot of people are, and I'm a neighbor island governor in a way. Uh, it was great to be there. I spoke at a conference and got to see a lot of terrific people on Kauai. So I'm grateful for all their uh, kind of their welcoming gestures, and it's fun. Okay, and your first 100 days, which you will hit next week, I think uh, the big topic is, I got to say, affordability. And, you know, everyone can relate to how can we make Hawaii more affordable for all of us to live in. So let's start by talking about those tax breaks. Yes, uh, the tax breaks are alive. They've come through the House. We'll now see them head over to the Senate. And I would just hope that we will see a significant number of them pass. We know that people have to have some of this money back in their pockets because we have a surplus. It would be unconscionable if we didn't do that. So you'll see the full array uh, to be further debated. It's a, de a decrease because of the earned income tax uh, credit going up, that we see rental tax credits, that we see food tax credits. We see tax credits for uh, people who send their kids to preschool, all of these. So I'm really appreciative of the House. And frankly, I had a great conversation with uh, the chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, uh, Donovan Dela Cruz has some very good ideas also. So I appreciated our meeting on Friday when we talked about that. Probably we would sunset that after five years so we could re-up it uh, if necessary, mm -hmm. four or five years out. That's important because you never know where the economy will go. But we now know that we have to give relief to our people, otherwise they're gonna leave Hawaii. So again, those tax breaks still alive. We are halfway through the ledge right now, so we'll see what happens yes. at the end in May. How about affordable housing and homelessness? That's going to be a big lift that takes a long time. So on homelessness, we hope and expect that we will see $30 million go into the budget uh, regarding Ohana zones. That gives our star, James Koshiba, the capacity to build the Kauhale. We intend to build 12 of them. He's already marking all of the spots where we can do it. We're partnering with the county so that they each have an opportunity to. Uh, of course, the epicenter of homelessness is on Oahu, but it's everywhere. So that's one big part. And then housing, there's $900 million in the budget for housing starts. And that's kind of the, um, the rental housing trust fund. There's a thing called DERF. So this is monies that goes towards development. And then remember, there's $600 million in Hawaiian homelands that has to be spent. Now, my first uh, nominee did uh, go down. Mm -hmm. That was Ikaika Anderson. And that's the prerogative of the Senate. I respect that. Uh, next one up is Kali Watson. He's done the job before. He has a lot of capacity to do this job. I've been given signals uh, from inside that they seem to be intent on confirming him, but you just don't know. And so uh, no matter what, I'm going to keep putting people up there that can do the job. There are a lot of good people that want to be public servants, and I would just implore us to get on with the work. Kali Watson is making headlines because he has been named in a lawsuit, a surfer, you know, hit him and others with a lawsuit. Any concern there? And, and is it just coincidence that these people that you keep picking for director of DHHL, you know, they're making headlines? All I can do is stay positive. I can't speak to other people's motives. Uh, and this I'm not talking about the Senate. I'm talking about on the outside in the world. All I would say is uh, my heart goes out to that young man who was hit by the canoe. I, and he's in college now. I'm so grateful to hear that he's doing pretty well. But as a doctor, I worry about everybody if they've been injured. That is separate, obviously. When accidents happen, they happen, and it's tragic. Uh, so again, heart goes out to him. I hope Kali Watson ultimately is able to do the job. And I support all of our nominees wholeheartedly because we have to get on with these projects. It's my job to get results for us on housing, on homelessness, on affordability. We've done some great stuff on climate, which is in our first 100-day plan. We put $100 million forward. We're now getting word that another $100 million will come, we believe, from the National Science Foundation. So we have an incredible momentum to do good things in Hawaii. But we do have to have some of this passed by the legislature. Meanwhile, I intend to sign all of their bills, provided that it's kind of the will of the people. And that's where we are right now, halfway through. Let's talk about Aloha Stadium finally, because you mentioned that before you were elected governor. What's the latest update with that? So the latest update is we vetted it. One of the plans was too expensive. It would have 
put another $450 million burden on the people of Hawaii, and I have to really keep the cost down. We don't want to have a situation where we get cost overruns like we did with the rail. So we appear to have consensus with the House and Senate leadership, $350 million for the stadium. We'll discuss the extra resources to do the demolition. That should be one RFP, it looks like, so that they can just get it done. Meanwhile, we'll do a parallel track for housing on the rest of the property. Uh, also, naming rights would go toward the stadium. And what we'll do is we'll have the person that does the design build mm -hmm. also manage it. So it's kind of a private partnership like the Senate had asked for. The House had asked for more of a public program totally. So it's a compromise, but that's good. That's what we're here for. Right. We build the thing as quickly as we can. But if they want, they could put extra money because they will be managing it and bringing extra revenue. We need a stadium because our kids need an opportunity to have exciting moments in life. And when you say as soon as possible, we're talking 2025? Seven. So the way it will be is uh, we did inherit kind of a tricky situation where we had uh, no choice but to do this new RFP, which I'm having our guys already tee up. We'll put the final numbers in that the House and Senate give us so we can be ready to go. And then we'll try to put both of those requests for proposals out at the same time because I want to see both the stadium and housing built. There's a lot of other things going on. I'm also going to encourage the military to support us because they're right near there with Pearl Harbor. I'd like to see them consider partnering with us if possible. Mm -hmm. They could do a hotel. But we need a stadium. We need housing. We need to take care of our people. All right, Governor, we thank you so much again for stopping by. And again, Governor Green will stop by every other week in the studio, not just to answer our questions, but to answer your questions. So we invite the viewers, the voters, email us your questions or post it in our Facebook page. Governor has agreed to answer any questions. Thanks again, Governor. Nice to see you. You too. It's my pleasure.